The World Health Organization reports that one of the most common forms of violence against women is that performed by their husbands or male partners. This type of violence is frequently and frequently happens behind closed doors and is worse where legal systems and cultural norms do not treat it as a crime but rather as a private family matter. One of the organizations that is heavily involved in dealing with women violence against women is the East African Sub-Regional Support Initiative uh, for the Advancement of Women. That is ERC. And joining me to discuss that and more is the executive director of the organization uh, who we have on set. Thank you so much for joining us for NTV at one. Now, um, I should first of all introduce you to our audience and you are the Executive Director of the East African Sub-Regional Support Initiative for the Advancement of Women Issues. That is Marin Akatsa Bukachi. Thank you for joining us once again. Thank you so much. Now, we, gender-based violence is, I mean, we have statistics pointing at 56%, that is according to the Health Demographic Survey 2011, that is... 57% of women go through this. These figures are a little bit more than the 48% that were recorded in the previous survey that was done. What does this mean to you? Uh, thank you for that question. It's actually uh, shocking, or you could say there are two issues. One could be that there is more awareness and therefore women are reporting more. Or you could also say that the violence has increased because if you look at the world in general, violence against women is something that people have talked about since Beijing, since 1995. And it has not gone down. In, in fact, it's becoming more pervasive. There are even new forms of violence that are coming in. We see the sexual violence is increasing. The rape and defilement of children has increased. Um, just trafficking is considered violence. In the past, it was not considered violence. But you know, in the majority of cases who are trafficked, they are women. And Uganda has actually put in place an anti-trafficking act, which also looks at even the workers that we import from the village. They are young girls. We are denying them their rights. We are denying them education. That is trafficking. So there's a whole load. But the Uganda Demographic and Health Survey was not even looking at issues of trafficking. They are looking at issues of slapping and beating <laughs> and you know, so... I, I will bring this to your attention that in Africa, the gender-based violence is rather considered a private issue that should be handled behind closed doors and you cannot afford to bring out your issues to, uh, to the public or to report your husband to the police that probably they have beaten you or, or they have um, sexually abused you. Do you think it's that we have to deal with these cultural norms and values that we've grown up uh, to deal with the issue of gender-based violence? I think really culture is an impediment to the eradication and prevention of violence against women. Because people uh, have cultural ways of agreeing or of, uh, of ending that in the sense that if you rape someone's daughter, then you pay a goat or a cow to the and clan <laughs> members. And, but you're not considering the victim or the survivor. And culture also does not want to spoil the name of the family. So you hide most of these issues are hidden behind closed doors. And uh, ARC has begun working with men because the majority of perpetrators are men. You see in the UDHS, yeah. it's women who are 15 and above who have been violated, the 56%. They were violated by men their husbands, their brothers, the people that they knew. And therefore we said, why don't we work with men? Make them our friends, our allies, our champions. And ARC has actually been working with men in uh, Rakai, uh, Kabale, and Busia, mm. who have become champions against SGBV in their own uh, villages. And this is having a great impact. But uh, before you actually, I can come in a little bit there. We men, I mean, you've talked about them being the perpetrators. But we also have cases where men are abused by women. Does ARC have some of those reports? Unfortunately, the men do not come out. Just like it has been so difficult for women to come out. Mm. Uh, you see, even in the statistics, you find that it appears as if it's the rural women 
who are more violated than the town women, urban women. Mm. But it's because the urban women are bank managers, directors, you know, big women in big places, elite women. Mm. They're also violated. They don't come out. So men are still at that stage, similar to these elite women, where it is very embarrassing to come out to say that your wife has been beating, beating you. you. Of course, yes. that, that's very true. And for me, that, that's a big issue that we need to deal with. Yeah, so I, I really wish to appeal to men to also come out. Because um, apart from working with these men that I'm telling you about, we've, uh, uh, the men themselves have uh, developed what they call referral pathways, where uh, within the community, you have people that you can ref uh, refer the perpetrators to. There could be the police, they could be health workers, they could be medical people, they could be you know, community leaders. And through these referral pathways, then you, you're able to have community participation and prevention of gender-based violence. So men could come out. That well said, men could come out. I'm sorry we are fast spent. Marion, thank you for joining us on thank discussion, so gender-based so violence. Yes. I'm sure that um, your efforts will be supported more. Thank you so much.